How are we doing? This is Ryan Nose Tech with TechInform.us, and we're going to be installing a OWC Mercury Extreme Pro 3G SSD, all that numbers and letters they throw in there, in a mid-2010 MacBook Pro. This is the 2.6 GHz Core 2 Duo. Um, doing this installation would be very easy, but uh, I don't do things the easy way. I like to complicate things, and here we've got the OWC Data Doubler, which pretty much trashes my DVD drive. That comes out and gets thrown on the floor and is replaced with this, where my old uh, SATA drive, the 7200 RPM Western Digital Scorpio, I believe black, the 320 gig, that's going to go in here. So it came with those two things. The unboxing should be up on my channel already. It also came with some uh, tools in here, screwdrivers, nylon pry tool for the ribbon cable. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and figure out what we need to do first to uh, get this stuff installed. Step one's for the idiots. You pretty much need to turn it off. Don't put it to sleep. That would be moronic. Turn it off, unplug it, put it on its uh, lid like this. I've got the latch here and the black part back there for reference. Alright, step one is pretty straightforward. We're pretty much going to come in here and remove the ten screws on the back of the MacBook Pro, taking note that the top three ones are longer than the other ones. So I'm just going to go ahead and stick those on this uh, microfiber here. They shouldn't move uh, around too much. Alright, ten screws have been removed. Now it's a very simple process of lifting off this back cover, which you'll find extremely thin and extremely light. I just picked it up by this black bar back there. It comes off and we'll see what's next. All right, so we've turned the machine around. We've got the, the black bar down here and then where the uh, handle would be to open it up over here. Batteries in the top left, optical bays in the bottom right. We've got uh, multiple screws to remove. It's pretty simple, uh, but before we do that, we're going to go ahead and disconnect the data cables between the hard disk drive that's in here right now and the uh, optical bay. So I'm just going to use this tool they gave me. Why the hell not, right? I didn't pay for it, but here it is. Pretty simple. Just pull up on those two cables. That's the hard drive one. Just be careful with it. And this, this is going to be the one for the optical drive there. The screws we need to remove, I'm going to start over here. It's in the top right of the optical bay. Just make sure you have your Mac in this configuration. I'm going to be using the same screwdriver, which is the green one here. Take that screw off. I'm going to set it over here. Then there's one in the bottom right. And then the black module below the optical bay here. This thing here, I believe, is the speaker. So there are two screws in here that need to be removed, one in the bottom right of said module. And it looks like they're the same screws as the other ones. In case not, I'm putting them to the left. And then there's another one in the top left, uh, closer to the actual speaker part. So there's those two out. And then there's one more. You need to be careful. There is a, uh, a cable here that you kind of need to move out of the way. And under there, using the same screw, there's one more black screw. So pull that out. These all look like they're the same, but I am putting them in slightly different locations. Take those five screws out, and we'll see what's uh, what's up next. All right, here's the fun part. Here's where we get to start gutting the Mac. The uh, speaker kind of moves out of the way. It looks like we're going to pull this up a little bit, being careful of that hard drive data cable there. Uh, I'm not hearing anything else in the way, and then it's just going to slide out right like that. So there's your uh, optical disk drive from the Mac. <coughs> Okay, so on the uh, actual optical bay itself, you're going to see this wire sticking out. Give it a gentle tug. It's going to come out just like this. We're going to need this piece in a little bit. In addition to this data cable, you're going to need this little thing that sticks out to the side there. That's where uh, one of the screws is attached. It is uh, right next to the data cable we just removed. So we're going to use that same screwdriver, remove those two screws, and set that small piece of hardware aside. Now with the, uh, the data doubler here, we're going to do the same process that we just did with this little clip. We're going to put it here on the data doubler. There's already two holes drilled there right by the little SATA adapter there. And we're going to put the same two screws back in. Right, we've got that little bracket installed. Now we're going to take this little thing we pulled off the uh, optical drive and put it here. Now the data doubler is going to go back in here just like the um, optical bay came out. Just be careful. Just take your time with this, guys. It's not a process that we need to rush through and worry about damaging ribbon cables and the speaker and stuff that we're pushing around in here. So just make sure that you get it under the cable by the fan there, underneath that. Uh, the only thing that is different from uh, the other um, optical bay that we took out is we're going to be using some different screws that were included. If you saw the unboxing, there was a small bag of screws 
right here we're going to be using, I think they said the two longer ones, which actually look really large, uh, to put this back in since this module is actually thicker than the other one. So um, I'll show you which screws they are and we'll get that tightened down. All right, so I just went ahead and put all the screws back in that I took out. Uh, the two on the speaker module, the one right here, I had to use the two longer ones over here. It was real easy. They came in this little bag like this. There were two very large screws. I don't know what machine those are for. And then there were four screws that are just about like this. So they were, uh, I don't even know if I got that on camera, just about like that, which were a little bit bigger than the ones that went in there before. Since this is thicker than the actual DVD uh, drive module, I mean, this is just real thin, probably aluminum, some such. Um, you need some longer screws to get through this. So the data doubler installation is pretty much done. Just make sure you got that clip on right, uh, that the screw goes in. Mine was upside down, real easy. I just took it out and switched it. Got the cable installed here, which is going to plug in. Right here, there are two. The one uh, closer to the battery is where the hard drive is going to plug in. And then the one that's right here, lo and behold, is where the optical bay used to plug in and what is now the hard drive bay. So now, um, if you just wanted to know how to install a data doubler, you're done. The data doubler is installed. At this point, we're going to continue with this. I'm going to show you how to take this original hard drive out. This is a 7200 RPM Western Digital Scorpio Black 320 gig. We're going to take this out, move it over here, and then put the 115 gig SSD in this existing hard drive bay. So the first step with doing all of that is going to be removing the two screws on the outside edge of the Mac here. This is on top of the hard drive. Those two screws are somewhat longer, so I'm going to take them off and put them right here so I know where they are. And then there's two more over here in between the data doubler and the hard drive. I don't think these come out of the actual little enclosure here. This piece is separate within itself. This is just a little clip here that kind of holds the hard drive in place. After that, just pulls out. Be very careful of the cable that is still here. I'm just going to peel that off the hard drive here, being very careful not to bend pins. I know it's not an IDE hard drive, but there are still technically pins in there. So here's this hard drive. At this point, it is going to be very easy to, let's see, just kind of put it in there. I'm actually going to have to take out these clips here on the side that they're on the hard drive. Those are what held it in. We're going to have to take those out. Let's do that now. Okay, so I'm the idiot. These little things on the side of the drive that stick out like little pegs, you're supposed to leave those in. There are actually holes within the data doubler where those fit. So we'll kind of line this up with the holes first, I'm going to say, or we're going to have to get it in there first and then put it in. It may be somewhat difficult to get that lined up, but we'll do what we can. All right, very minor change of plans here that we had to do. Those little pegs in the hard drive stay in. You, I actually took off the green connection here on the data doubler. There's three screws, two back by the battery and one over here closer to the fan. Take that off, slide the hard drive in, and then put the adapter on, making sure it's still connected to the motherboard here. After that, just put the three screws back in there, and uh, we'll be putting the SSD in shortly. Okay, so I just took the SSD out of its little plastic enclosure here, and this is going to be probably the easiest part of this whole thing. I'm going to take the two pegs off of the hard drive here that we don't need. I'm going to put them on here. Too bad they don't give you four. They should give you some extras with the data double. That's my only complaint with this so far. And then we'll just put that in there into the same data cable that the old hard drive used, and we'll be good to install OS X. Alright, so I have, uh, with the two pegs that I have, I put one uh, in this corner and one in this corner. So now I'm just going to plug in my data cable, making sure the data cable does actually go under the SSD. I knew somebody that tried to put it in on top once. <clears throat> We're going to put it in there, fits perfectly. Line up the pegs that we have. Okay, feels, actually feels like it's punched up under there. Can't be though. I have to check that real quick. Cut, cut, cut. Editing magic. It's not. All right, it's not, so we're just going to put it back in. Then we have that uh, thing we took off before. That's going to line up. Just uh, reverse installation. Screw those two screws down. And we're pretty much done. Just reverse installation of putting that top cover back on, and then we've got to install OS Lion. Make sure that these two cables on the motherboard here are connected. That would be very bad if they weren't, because none of your data would move anywhere. We've got that back. Um, I'm going to turn this around when we put these screws back in, so we have the same orientation of before. Remembering that there goes some screws. Um, remembering that the three longer screws in this case are at the top, and then the smaller ones go around the rest of the perimeter. Alright guys, we just got everything installed. The cover has been screwed back down. We're going to go ahead and open this up. I've got OS 10.6.6, .6, actually Lion, 
uh, or Snow Leopard rather, installed on that flash drive. So we're going to see if we can option boot into that. Running on battery power right now. We'll probably do the rest of the install uh, over uh, power. So holding option there. We've got a couple different options. It looks like it found uh, OS Snow Leopard on the USB, which is weird. Oh, actually, that would be what I want. And then the hard drive is the Snow Leopard um, disk that used to be in the main drive in here. So we're going to boot into the USB thing. This is going to be our OS 10 setup. So that's where I'm going to end this video. We'll be doing some reviews and speed tests and all the good stuff with the SSD in the future. That is the uh, OWC Mercury Extreme Pro 3G. The whole kit was $270 plus uh, shipping, which they get me a great deal uh, for one day. I actually ordered it Saturday. Today, Tuesday, it showed up. So good service. Seems to be really good. We're booting off that flash drive now, so it's going to be a little slow. But stick tuned to the future videos going over uh, the SSD. The website is techinform.us. My Twitter, twitter.com slash James R. Schultz and the live web shows are Tuesday nights between 8 and 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Ustream.tv slash user slash Tech Informus. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.